What's up, beautiful people? And welcome back to another comic book review video. It is I, your crazy Nicolas Cage, your steward of Gundor, your genius billionaire playboy, basic YouTuber philanthropist, Supercliff. And would you kindly hit that like and subscribe button for every little bit helps in this majestic YouTube world. And today we are getting freaky and dirty with King in Black issue number four, written by Marvel's golden boy, Donnie Cates and drawn by the epicness of epic Ryan Stegman. And away we go. As our story begins with Dylan encased within a barrier made up of symbiotes so that Null can talk privately with Dylan whilst the battle rages on outside, Null tells Dylan to basically just chill and relax as he assures him that he is not here to hurt him. Rather, instead, Null reveals to Dylan that his hive mind, his rebellious children, a typical disappointed father's response, created Dylan in order to destroy their master, Null. But Null promises that this will not come to pass, for Null is winning. Legit, nearly all of Earth's heroes are either under his control or completely incapacitated, and it's only a matter of minutes before the entirety of Earth is 100% under his control. However, according to Null, Dylan doesn't need to end up like the others, for Dylan is special. So special, Null goes as far as to say that he's almost like a son to him. So as a means of temptation, Null offers Dylan an ultimatum. Dylan joins Null, and together they can rule the galaxy as father and son. Or, if Dylan declines, then he will burn this world to the ground, Troy style. Now before we proceed, check it, because while Null has been having this conversation with Dylan, tempting him to join him and whatnot, a third voice has been mentally communicating with Dylan all throughout, telling Dylan he needs to calm down and listen. As this person, this voice, tells Dylan that Null made a mistake by bringing him here, therefore Dylan can use his powers to break into the hive. So yeah, this is a prime example of Null's hubris. But yeah, so as we see Null letting out his hand for Dylan to join him, Dylan slowly grabs his hand and straight up says, you killed my dad, and boom. Dylan uses his powers to hack into the hive mind, and as a result, free Cyclops, Human Torch, Invisible Woman, and many, many more. Elsewhere, the telepathic voice that was communicating with Dylan begins chatting with Doctor Strange, telepathically downloading battle plans into Strange's mind. And whilst that is happening, Black Cat gives back Strange's Asgardian staff. Doctor Strange activates it and transforms into Asgardian Strange God Mode. Once more, Donny Cates is connecting his Doctor Strange arc with his epic. Anyways, once Strange is fully linked with the battle plans, Strange immediately instructs all the heroes to unleash their full powers to push back the symbiotes into the center of Manhattan. Now, once all Null's forces are pushed into the city's center, Namor and his forces conjure up a fantastic tsunami which floods the city. And once that happens, both Thor and Storm call down the lightning to strike the water, thereby successfully taking out Null's forces. Now, it's during this moment where we see Dylan attempting to run away whilst Null is suffering the pain due to Dylan's hack. But unfortunately, Null recovers and grabs Dylan, telling the kid that no one is coming to save you, except suck a fuck Null, because we are finally shown as to who it was whom was mentally communicating with Dylan and Doctor Strange. And it's not other than the Omega Mutant herself, Marvel Girl, aka Jean Grey. Now, following this awesome reveal, Jean taps into her powers and begins navigating Null's mind in order to see what weaknesses the villain possesses. And of course, we are shown the past memories of Null. Null building the all-black Necrosword, waging war against the Celestials and the Golden Armor Warriors, along with Crash landing on board the God Butcher's planet way back during Jason Aaron's God Butcher story arc. Now, sadly, Jean's completely shocked that she's unable to find a weakness. Like, like for real, there's no secret girl that Null lost and therefore became evil. There's no son. There's nothing that he cared about prior. Null is just Null. He's, he is just an asshole. So basically, there is nothing holding him back until she catches a glimpse of a glowing white sigil, aka the God of Light. Therefore, Jean realizes that though Null is the God of the Abyss, he is not technically the embodiment of darkness itself. He was merely born in it. <laughs> my, that's my Bane impression. I digress. Therefore, Null has an opposite, a god of light, who has opposed him since the beginning of the universe. And here we see the god of light having had bonded to the Golden Warriors, and it's at this point we realize that, that this god of light acts quite similar to a symbiote. Now, because back then, the light bonded with several warriors at a time, its powers grew thin, hence as to why Null was able to defeat them. So, as a result, the god of light decided that by bonding to want to only one entity at a time, it could provide its host with enough power to oppose Null. Now, unfortunately, even though Marvel Girl is able to penetrate Null's mind, this is still taking a huge toll on her, on her well-being. Therefore, she collapses. However, Jean is able to learn that the God of Light is being held at bay in Earth's orbit by the symbiote barrier Null created back in King and Black issue number one. 
But fear not, folks, because Thor's ravens return with the Silver Surfer, who then telepathically assures Jean that he can access the God of Light through Null's barrier. Silver Surfer absorbs the Light Force into himself and begins phasing through the Living Abyss. As a result, Null screams the word, No. No, not like that, but rather more like this. Once through, Silver Surfer senses that the God of Light doesn't want him as its host, and so the Silver Surfer separates from it and tells it to find its chosen warrior. Back at the hero's HQ, Mr. Fantastic eventually realizes that he, that he actually knows what the God of Light is, and that this entire time, they've all been referring to it by a different name. Check it, for the God of Light is none other than the Enigma Force, a sentient symbiotic energy field that powers Captain Universe. And immediately afterwards, the Enigma Force bonds to Eddie Brock's corpse and resurrects him, declaring that it has chosen him as its next avatar. King in Black, issue number four, was a fantastic issue. Legit, there were so many moments in this issue where I actually stood up and shouted, fuck yeah, which is a testament to the wonderful craft Kate has been sewing since 2018. I think what's great about this issue and Donnie Kate's Venom story as a whole is the fact that no, throughout the whole Venom epic, hell yeah, this is an epic, 100%, my epic stamp of approval has been activated, <laughs> but yeah. Consistently, Null has been amped up to be this god of this godlike badass, a king of darkness, god of symbiotes, killer of worlds, etc., etc. And it wasn't until this issue where we actually get to see Null become vulnerable. Like for real, since Venom issue one, everything has been going pretty well for the villain thus far. And so to see Null finally actually reach that moment where he's like, "Oh shit, I can actually die," when the God of Light, aka the Enigma Force, arrives, was a really cool and definitely a well-earned moment for us longtime Donny Cates Venom readers. In addition, Kate is able to effectively combine certain elements of Marvel's past history with his own story. And the way that Kate does it, it isn't like Bendis, who will basically rewrite things just so it works for the story that he's telling, aka the Bendis effect, but rather Kate clearly does his homework and is able to have certain things transpire within his work that follows the already established rules of the Marvel Universe. For example, Jean being able to use her telepathy abilities against Null. Now, typically for regular telepaths, this wouldn't work against being such as Null. But the fact that Jean Grey is an Omega level mutant essentially bypasses Null's barrier. It's moments such as that which makes things matter for comic book readers, as well as the consistency with already established lore. Basically less confusion. Also the fact that the Enigma Force is by all accounts being treated as a sort of a symbiote is awesome. God, I love Donny Cates. I love him, I love him, I love him. <laughs> I'm calling it that following King in Black and Cates' Venom run, Agent Venom, aka Flash Thompson, will return as the main Venom, while Eddie becomes the, the new Captain Universe Venom. Like, hot damn, I cannot wait for the next issue. I'm so happy, guys. Just just be happy with me. Come on, let's all just virtually grab our hands together and just, and just be happy for light. <laughs> King in Black, issue number four, gets a 9.5 out of 10. Giggity goo.